14,000 feet up on the Tibetan plateau, nomads herd their yaks. It's minus 10 degrees centigrade and it's been much colder. Since November, there's been one blizzard after another and deep snow in an area which expects a light covering and enough grass to sustain the animals. Carcasses of dead yaks litter the landscape. Three quarters of a million animals have perished since November, most of them yaks. The herdsmen have watched their livelihood wither away. About a quarter of a million people depend on the yaks to survive. Around a third have lost at least 90% of their animals. Without the yaks, the nomads have no food, fuel, shelter or transport, and nothing to trade with. An animal that has starved to death is worth little. The skin can be sold, but no short-term gain can offset the loss of the basis of the nomadic lifestyle, and the prices are dropping. A Buddhist monastery at Shiudutu, the faithful spin the wheels to release prayers into the atmosphere. The nomads are the region's most devout Buddhists, with a tradition of close links with the monasteries. The abbot here believes the monks, the government and ordinary Tibetans must help care for the nomads. <laughs> It isn't just altruism. The economy of the whole region would be threatened if the nomads' traditional way of life were to collapse. Yushu town has become the distribution center for foreign aid. Food, medical supplies and blankets are being sent to nomads in the worst hit areas. <laughs> To thank the aid workers, Yushu officials laid on a display of local dance. They realized that without outside help, they would have been faced with tens of thousands of starving people on their doorstep. <laughs> a month ago, the Chinese military airlifted some grain into the region, but it quickly ran out. Now, Médecins Sans Frontières have bought 1,200 tons of barley from the provincial capital, Xining, enough to feed 60,000 people for a month. But according to the program's coordinator, Serge Deporter, this is only a stopgap. At this moment, we are focusing all our efforts on the emergency program which is the food, the blankets and the medicine. Of course, if we do not want the Tibetan people to be depending for the, for the next couple of years on national or international aid, the cattle need to be replaced as soon as possible. <laughs> During the coldest weather, 6,000 yaks a day were dying. Replacing them will be no mean task. This winter, the hardest on record has come on top of a five-year drought. Even if the herds were rebuilt, there's little for them to eat. And even if they avoid the immediate threat of starvation, the nomads face a bleak future and the possibility of having to abandon their time-honored way of life.